Hello there, sword friends. I am going to make another video of a unboxing of sorts. I don't usually do unboxings, though for some reason people tend to like them. But I have here a few swords of the custom variety that I got in the mail, and so I am going to take them out of the package and maybe it'll give you some idea of how people ship fancy swords. Uh, and it'll also give you a chance to maybe see some of the first impressions that I have uh, as I take said swords out of packages. So, uh, give me a moment as I turn on my, my light of goodness here. Alright, and we'll get on with the festivities. So this is a blade from Prismic. I'm probably not saying the name correctly. In a nutshell though, this is a blade uh, that's supposed to be shipped from Poland. What I feel seems like a piece of solid wood and then there is a foam type substance on it. Uh, so we will see what we have here. It's doubly awkward for me to do this and try to do it on a web camera. Or smarter, I'd probably do something a little different with a different camera setup, but um, I didn't think that far ahead, so no dice there. Opening the box, I hope it's not some socks. Yay, yay, box! This was uh, something of a, a whim purchase. Uh, wasn't really looking for more projects, but at the same time, uh, Prismic and me have well, I bought a few swords from Prismic over the years, and I've been pretty happy with all of them. He's really uh, a smith that's it's been really fun for me, because I've gotten to see some of his earlier work, and I've gotten to also see some of uh, some of his recent work, and it's, it's really cool to see a craftsman evolve in their craft over time. Now, I'm, I'm also... Uh, my preferences change, I learn different things, I start to understand things differently, I learn more about what to look for, what not to look for, and it's it's interesting to to be able to, to see some of those refinements in, in Prismic's work as, uh, as time goes on. I mean, even, um, even now, just looking at the Shirasaya, uh, so he's, he's got a, a different kind of taper going on here in the, in the Suk area, uh, the edges are, are beveled a little bit, something I don't remember from the last Shirasaya that he had. Um, in a nutshell, these Shirasaya pieces are, are really uh, basic, and admittedly he's, he's more of a bladesmith than he is a fitting maker or a Saya maker, but I think this would give anyone a really strong base to start from if you were going to do a project and potentially save you a little bit of money. The seams all look... Uh, pretty clean and nice. I don't know that I would um, that it would look good just as a basic wood grain sire because the the seam is pretty pronounced. Uh, but if you were painting or lacquering the sire, I think it would it would hold up well. All right. Got a really nice, nice, even flat surfaces, clean, pretty clean lines anyway. There's a, there's a couple little ripples that I can see from the, the hardening areas on the, the hard areas on the hamon. Um, this is also a little bit of a bummer, probably tough to see, but there, you might be able to see it just in the reflection of the light there. There's a little bit of sire rub. And overall, it just has a really beautiful hamon. Uh, I really like the large okasaki on the blade. Uh, Prismic's gotten quite a bit better at burnishing the kasaki. Um, these are these are disappointing areas, though. When you see, let's see if I can get it in the. You might just be able to see it here, kind of where my nose is. It looks like 
uh, just small areas of rubbing that, I mean, basically the blade is sitting in this, uh, in this side here, and it's bouncing around on its way over the pond. And when the, uh, when the blade doesn't sit just perfectly in the in the saya, when there's any amount of wood or something touching the, the surface of the blade, as it bounces around and as, as it's being shipped, um, the, the saya rubs on the blade and affects the polish. And it's not something that's, at least within my personal capability to remedy. So it's disappointing when I see that, but I've seen it on many, many different kinds of blades. And usually it's only from folks that have a really have, have somebody that make a Saya and do it in a custom way uh, that only really makes Saya and really know what they're doing. Uh, avoid that. I see it a lot on production katanas and I've seen it on some custom swords as well when the Sayas are made by folks that aren't, you know, aren't necessarily devoted only to Saya making. And Prismic, admittedly, he's, he's not going trying to make Saya specifically. He's more of a bladesmith and, and uh, and the, the sigh isn't, isn't it. so I'm not faulting him for it, is, is the main point. He has a really bold hamon in this. It's, it's just very, it's very pleasant to look at, and I like the, I really, I really dig the big, the big okasaki on it. Let's see if I can... Now again, I'm opening these as and showing them to you as I'm seeing them here, so um, I'm looking at them first and not focusing on the camera as much as I should, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's entertaining for you as well. There we go, you can see the hamon there. That's one thing he does, he does real well. Uh, in terms of evolution, he's, he's gotten the habaki down quite a bit more he's, his, uh, his work on the habaki and the shape of, of it how it how it appears to fit um, is, is quite a bit better than uh, than some other iterations that I've seen from him the blade also feels uh, hefty but it is um, thinner it seems than some of the other blades that I've had from prismic it's still um, a beefier blade. And on the Mune, I see a little bit more Saya rub here. Uh, still beefy, but um, thinner than some of the other works that I've seen from him. I'm also really digging, he has, he has some hardening along the spine of the blade, and there are a few spots um, right in here, and, and some, uh, some tempering that I can make out on the Mune, which is, which is pleasant. Uh, anyway... There we go. There's the, the Prismic Sword, my initial impressions. I think for, for what this man charges, uh, he does he does a really good job. I mean, he's asking like between six or eight hundred dollars for most of these Wakazashis in Shirasaya, which is a pretty great deal in my opinion, at least if you're looking for a Waki, right? Um, there's a lot of things that I think you could do with them. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this one. I'm almost tempted to do some sort of tactical kind of wakazashi and, and maybe put on some uh some i don't know do something different than than the average average bear uh, but in a nutshell if you're looking for a wakazashi and you don't want to spend a ton of money and you want something maybe for cutting this blade looks like it has a really good cutting profile uh, this is a great place to start i mean like i said he's usually asking between six and eight hundred dollars for a polished wakazashi with habaki and shirasaya uh, sometimes they're a little more, sometimes you'll catch him when he's uh, uh, hard up for cash and he puts it on sale. But in either case, I think it's it's a real uh, real solid deal and I'm happy <laughs> happy as a pig in shit with this sword right here. Um, this is uh, this is good stuff, so tip of my hat to, to Prismic. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. The next fancy pantsy sword that I'm going to be opening is uh, what hopefully is in this box is a Rick Barrett uh, 26 inch Shobu Zakuri blade. So we will we will see how this works out. Again, the unboxing side of things is always a little. Uh, I don't know if honestly maybe you like watching this or not. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, it does give me a chance to maybe explain some of the things I look for when I get when I get the blades. Uh, what I hope to see. What I don't hope to see. 
maybe you're just looking for my priceless expressions, which I can't imagine why anyone would want to intentionally look at my face for longer than necessary, but uh, maybe that's more self-deprecating than I need to be. Ramble, 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 blah, 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 blah. Ramble, ramble, talking, 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 ramble, 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 talking. This is covered with rubber tip, cap tip, tang. Oh, look, you wrote on it where the tang is and where the tip is. That's nice. All right, so, uh, looks like this blade is in oil. That's not a bad thing. Uh, and then wrapped in saran wrap. This is something that uh, isn't a bad idea either. If you coat a blade in oil uh, or, or some sort of um, something to, to push the water away, uh, you're a lot less likely to run into spotting or issues like that. Uh, sometimes people will coat them in saran wrap and then put them in a saya as well. Uh, I haven't found that to hurt anything except in extreme cases where uh, people have stored their blades like this. I remember I bought an antique Chris once and it was uh, shipped to me in uh, a plastic and oil over the blade. But when the cellophane or the, the plastic was removed, the, um, well, in a nutshell, the, the blade had all sorts of uh, residue and, and some something that had stuck on the blade and, and showed the ripples from the plastic. I'm not sure maybe it was the oil that was used or something, but I haven't always had 100% success with this, but most of the blades that I get shipped in cellophane with oil on them have, have come out and been clean in the end. It is uh, a messy ordeal to take them off though. <laughs> There's so, so many dirty jokes I can make right now. It's, Habaki. All right. Well, uh, the Habaki, you can see, fits on pretty much exactly as it should. I'm going to take a quick look at general shaping. When I get a blade in the mail like this, the first thing I'm looking at, uh, did the tip break off? In this case, no sir. Looks in good order. I'm looking for anything that might have been misrepresented. Are there any nicks, chips, dings, things like that? In this case, I don't see anything immediately. The uh, seller of the sword was very generous with the oil. Everything is nice and nice and clean here. It's ironic that I'm getting these two blades on the same the same day. Um, Prismic. If I, let's see if I can get the hormone to pop out here. I think Prismic and uh, Rick Barrett have some very similar aesthetics when it comes to the Hamon. They're both very, very bold and, and kind of wild Hamons. Um, In terms of comparing the, the two, which isn't really something that I, I want to do, um, I'm not trying to, you know, do a, a, a sweeping comparison between Prismic or Rick, but since I've unboxed both of these blades at the same time, uh, you can s spot some differences between a smith that's been in the game for a long time, even though this is probably one of the works he's done some time ago, uh, but the, the lines are um, 
just super clean. The, the blade is glass smooth as I look at it in the light. All of the flats of the blade are, are even. Uh, the Shogu is a curry tip. It's very, very clean. The blade has a very graceful distal taper. It's thinner than the Prismic blade is to start, and um, it has a very, very subtle distal taper. The Hibaki as well, I believe this is a Hibaki made by Rick. Uh, it, it, it fits really, really well, and the shaping of it is a little bit better. The Nakago also has quite a bit of an attention to it. I didn't look at the one on the Prismic blade yet, uh, but Rick has has a really clear and clean signature. It looks really nice, and I, I like the detail on the Nakago as well. Anyway, this is another one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, this one came up for sale on Facebook, of all places, and, uh, and it was just uh, it was an opportunity to, to get uh, a very pretty blade, but I don't... I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. It's it's big, but it's small. It's 26 inches, but it's hefty. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This might be a chance for me to do something silly. Uh, anyway, that is all I have. There's unboxing more custom swords. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found it mildly entertaining or interesting. And uh, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below. Cheers.